We are essential workers. We deserve the respect and dignity CEOs get. Grocery store and retail employees across the U.S. are on the front lines of the coronavirus pandemic, risking their health to make sure America gets fed. And now they want to be compensated for that sacrifice. Workers nationwide have organized strikes, protests, and sick outs. Among their demands is something called hazard pay. Hazard pay. Hazard pay. Basically, extra compensation for doing dangerous work. Hi, I'm Yara, and I talk to grocery store employees across the country to learn about the risks they face, why hazard pay is necessary now more than ever, and what this particular pandemic means for the future of labor rights in the U.S. But first off, I wanted to get a sense of what it's like to work at grocery stores and in retail in the age of coronavirus. Tell us some of the risks that you face at work. I'm just surrounded by people. They are not even restricting the amount of people per aisle. It's very hard to practice social distancing when you have hundreds if not thousands of people coming through on a daily basis. It starts from 7 a.m. and you just see a flood of people. Face masks, kids, babies. The amount of contact in the store that's unavoidable has made me feel unsafe. I am actually one of the youngest people in the deli. A lot of people are in their 60s and they are very much nervous for their health. My options at this point are either to protect myself or keep a roof over my head. I don't feel like I have the option to do both. So with all these risks, I had to ask about hazard pay. But what exactly is the concept behind hazard pay? Hazard pay is a fancy term for a simple concept. That's Josh Murray. He's a professor at Vanderbilt University who studies class conflict. In more dangerous jobs, in order for people to do it, they have to pay. So if you work on an oil rig, that's really dangerous. They'll pay more money because if they don't, people aren't going to take the job. Well, now that being a grocery store clerk isn't safe, what they're saying is you should pay us more if we're gonna risk our lives. Is your company offering you hazard pay? We did get a dollar raise for hazard pay. It's $2 an hour. It's a $2 wage uh, increase. So this year was actually supposed to be the year they were gonna bump us to 15 anyways. So now they're putting out this press release saying, you know, we're gonna give them $2 more for hazard pay but that would just come out to the $15 they were already gonna pay us. Right now, I'm still making less than 12. What they are offering was a one-time amount of money added to our quarterly bonus. So far, Walmart has not paid any hazard pay to its employees. Not raising wages, not even cutting hours. We reached out to Walmart and learned that while employees are getting a one-time $150 to $300 payout, no one is getting an hourly wage increase. I'd rather have hazardous pay than an extra bonus. Many entry-level grocery and retail jobs pay minimum wage. Depending on the state, that can range from $5.15 to $14. Retailers may be raising wages by $1 or $2 for now, but some are also cutting hours, which means a lot of those employees may not be eligible for health benefits. And there continue to be reports about grocery store workers dying from contracting COVID-19. The store is making millions of dollars and extra sales from panic buying. Our sales are, on some days, almost 10 times the amount. And for us to lose hours and only be making $2 an hour extra, it's not enough for the risks that we're taking. How much hazard pay would you demand? Twice our salary. It's not unreasonable to even ask for double time. We are doing at least twice the amount of work. I think we should be getting paid double what we're getting paid right now. I can tell you from how I feel when I come home from work physically, what we're doing, it is worth twice our pay. When a crisis comes and starts taking things away, you realize what you can do without and what you can't. And I think what we're realizing is that the working class is the thing that you can't actually do without. When the Great Depression hit, I think that people awoke to the idea that the working class was actually the engine of everything. And as the Depression wore on, companies like General Motors were able to make profits still, sometimes profits that were larger than before the Depression. At GM specifically, they laid off half of their workforce, they cut wages, and by 1936, they were making more money than they were before the Depression. But instead of hiring the same people they laid off, they hired new people with lower wages. When a crisis hits, you realize where the profit's coming from and what the employer is willing to do, which is essentially step on the worker in order to make a buck. And it becomes much more obvious. The workers saw that they were not sharing in those profits. They would have to come together themselves. When a few hundred workers sat down at their stations and refused to leave, it shut all of production off. The company had to negotiate and they were able to win. And that kind of led to this wave of unionism. The events at General Motors sparked a wave of strikes across the auto industry and led to a period of major unionization. It's been described as a pivotal win for labor rights in the United States. That moment, that crisis, led to workers' rights movements organizing and demanding better conditions and succeeding. Can the coronavirus pandemic similarly mark a turning point for workers' rights in this country? One of the things that social movement research shows is that people mobilize into movements 
when they think they can win. It's known as the politics of the possible. Every little victory at a grocery store, every little victory at Amazon reverberates through the working class and says, you too can win if you join a union, if you join a movement, if you act collectively. As that kind of crescendo rises, the balance of power is tipped and where you can have similarly the depression, just a, a new moment of workers' rights. Do you think the company cares about your safety and well-being? Only we workers care about our safety and we're going to have to take you know, direct action to realize that and not wait on the corporation to do it because in the end of the day, they're, they're only concerned about costs. As grocery workers, you know, most of us are paid minimum wage. I feel like we always served an essential function in society, but now we're being recognized that way. We see the business owners um, and people on a corporate level making so much money, but we're the ones that are putting our physical bodies <laughs> at risk and are the ones that are helping the customers find the things they need to get through the next few days. All right, you guys are on the front lines. We're keeping this economy afloat. Without us, it would all come to a, a halt. Hey guys, thanks for watching. So. How do you guys think this will all shake out? Will employers actually start offering hazard pay that's double what their employees are making right now? Will unions be bolstered by the coronavirus crisis? Kind of like how the Great Depression led to a huge wave of strikes and unionization around the country? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. And if you want something else to watch, click that video up there.